Hello, hello, manifestors. Welcome to the Redesign Your Mind podcast. I'm your host, TJ Dagley. I'm an author and master mindset strategist, and I work with women all over the country who have a desire to elevate their limited mindset so she can shift from a place of mediocrity, lack, and limitation to a place of success, love, abundance, and all things magical. If this sounds like something that you are interested in, trust me, girlfriend, you are in the right place. Hello, manifestors. Welcome back to another episode of Redesign Your Mind podcast. I am super excited to have you all here today. And I'm just going to jump right into the topic. We are going to be doing a really quick Q&A. I get questions all the time via my Instagram DM and uh, they tend to all be the same or very, very similar. So I thought that I'd go ahead and make episode two a Q and A. And before I get started, let me say this. If you ever have a question about a topic that I'm speaking about here on this podcast, go ahead and comment and leave it as um, feedback, or you can follow me on Instagram at Mindset Makeover Mogul. DM me there, comment on my pictures there, and go ahead and ask your question or give your topic suggestions. I am very open to, as I said in the first episode, of what you all would love to hear. And just in case you are new here and you, you have not taken the time to listen to episode one, I think it will really bless your soul. So make sure when you're done here to go ahead and listen to episode one. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast, leave your feedback and rate. And what I've decided to do for you all who take the time to do that, those of you who take the time to pay me with rating, subscribing and commenting, I am going to do once a month a giveaway of one of my books because I appreciate you all. And I just want to, you know, repay you all with some kindness and that to me, uh, giving you one of my books, uh, I think is a great idea. So let's jump right into question number one. How do you just relax and let go when all you've been trained to do is work for it? It's all it's it is almost like anxiety to let go. Okay, so basically what this person is saying that we have been conditioned to go get it. We have been conditioned to hustle. We have been conditioned that uh, in order to be successful in any and all areas of our life, we have to work really, really, really hard for it. And that is just not true. So how do you just relax and let it go? You simply (laughs) relax and let it go. When you truly believe in a higher power, the universe, God, and you know that what is for you is for you, then you should not be worried. And there, there is a quote that I really, really love. And let's see if I can say it without jacking it up. Um, nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists. And I think that's out of a course of miracles. Um, Nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists. Essentially what that is saying is what is for you is for you. Nobody come hell or high water can change what is for you. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can slow it down. Nobody can ruin it. It is just yours. So when you really pray and ask for uh, something and you truly believe that God is going to bless you with that thing, then you can rest in that. Because when we start to put our hands in it too much and we try to control and we try to fix and we try to manipulate, that's when things start to fall apart. Okay. Um, I recently moved into a new apartment that I'm so in love with and 
at the time, this is about a month ago, I didn't have a job, <laughs> right? And that's like a big deal when you're trying to get a place to live. They want to know that you pay for it. Um, you know, it really did look like it was going to be a no. You know, you ever watch um, American Idol and Randy would always say, it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think about. Yeah, it's a no. You don't have a job. Your credit is low key jacked up. So, yeah, no, you're not going to get approved for this apartment. But I prayed for it. I meditated on it. I asked for it, okay, in my prayer. And I let it go. Because anytime I try to control it, like the, the, the outcome, I really did become anxious and that wasn't a good feeling. So I let it go. I asked for signs, you know, God, if this is for me, if it's going to work out, give me signs and Lord have mercy. Did he give me signs? And I'm going to talk about that in another podcast episode because we will be here all night. Okay. It's <laughs> like the way that it all played out is a uh, it was just, it was miraculous. So just know that what is for you is for you. You have to have that unwavering belief that God has got your back and his desire is to give you all of your desires. And when you really, when you rest in that, it's like, okay, yeah, what am I worried about? What am I worried about? All right, next question, number two. Yesterday was a heavy negative thought day. How do you shut down those thoughts to move on towards, uh, and it is cut off. So um, I can't read the end of it. <clears throat> Yesterday was a negative, a heavy negative thought day. So we all have thoughts, right? We It's said that we have approximately 50,000 thoughts a day. There's no way we can turn them off. They're going to come whether we like it or not. Okay. So, and and a lot of those thoughts are negative because our ego gets in the way. Our little ego just wants to keep us comfortable, wants to keep us safe. So we have all this negative mind chatter going on in our heads. And what you have to do is disrupt the pattern. OK, and, w- and what I do when there's a negative thought going through my head is I talk to myself. I will literally say Mm-mm, and shake my head. <laughs> no. And that disrupts that thought, you know, and sometimes depending on what the thought is, I will say cancel that. I don't receive that. I don't come into agreement with that. Literally, I say that out loud. And that is how one of the things that you can do to disrupt the pattern, you have to figure out what that is for you. Um, But once you do figure it out, make sure that that's something that you implement on a regular basis, because the negative thoughts are going to come and will have you want to jump off a bridge somewhere. Okay. All right. Next question. I have a problem with detaching and letting go. I just kind of answered this while at the same time living like I have it already. Okay. So for instance, say you want a brand new car, you need a new car for whatever reason, but income wise, you don't know that you can afford it. Maybe your credit isn't all that great. Maybe you're like me a month ago and didn't have any income, but you really need it. Right. You really desire to have it. What I would suggest you do is number one, go and find the car. Whatever it is, is whatever it is that you are desiring to to attract or to manifest, go out and find it experiences. So we're just gonna stick with the car um, example. Take pictures in it, really become one <laughs> with the car, right? Drive it and really take and bottle up that, uh, that feeling. So when you go into a new car, you can smell it. We all know what that new car, oh my God, that's like one of the best smells in the world. Um, I really need to find that scent 
and create a candle because it's just like one of the best since ever, right? So you want to really engage your five senses. So what does it smell like? What does it feel like? Of course, you don't want to lick the car or anything, but (laughs) I mean, you could, but that would be a little weird. Okay. And then you have to stay connected to that feeling. And you have to say that I know that this car is mine. The how is never your business. How you're going to be approved for with bad credit and little to no income, that's not your business, right? You just say, God, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is what I desire to have. And it is mine. There's something so magical by, you know, owning something, saying that it's yours before it's actually yours. So how to live like you have it already. Um, just like what I said, you really stay connected to that feeling on a daily basis. Use your imagination. Um, pretend, you know, when we were kids, we were so good at make believing. We were so good at using our imaginations. Um, you know, I remember tying a pillowcase around my neck, making a little cape and I was a wonder woman running around the house. Right. But as adults, that ability has been suffocated um by society oh my god i need to sneeze please don't sneeze right now (laughs) it has been suffocated and we don't really know how to tap into it anymore because it's a muscle that we haven't used in forever so now it's a very weak muscle but we have to start imagining again and visualizing again and you really just tap into that that car is mine i'm the proud owner of a 2018 tesla x that is my car i'm so grateful to have it i love it whatever right stay in that moment see yourself driving the car see yourself driving the car into your garage closing the garage down getting out of the car, closing the door, turning the alarm on, like step by step, see yourself owning that car. And I guarantee you, whatever it is that you desire, whether it's a car, it's a house, it's a job, it's going to be yours in no time. How do you personally remove resistances in your life? Hmm. Um, I don't know that you can remove resistances. I believe that you need to face them. Whatever that resistance is, is there for a reason and you need to face it. Don't ignore it. There's a saying that goes, what you resist will persist. So whatever that thing is that you just need to deal with, uh, it's not going to go anywhere. You have to turn around, face it head on and move past it. That is really all that you can do. It's not something that you can remove, okay? How do you act as if you are already in a relationship? I understand being grateful, but what action do you take? Okay, so this is about relationships, love, all. Um, I remember watching this lady's Facebook Live last year. I think it was last year. Maybe it was 2015. At the time, uh, well, she was pretty much telling her story, uh, how she met her husband using the law of attraction. She had purchased a book. I can't remember the name of it right now. But she purchased a book and read the book, implemented everything in the book. As, as foolish as some of the stuff sounded, uh, one of the things that was in the book is... Um, that she was to, when she cooked and made her plate, uh, she was to make two plates and pretend that her husband or future husband was sitting there eating with her. That's what she did. When you wake up in the morning, you talk to the guy. He's not there. He doesn't exist yet in your world. Um, but you talk to him just as you would if he were really there. Go out, try on wedding dresses, um, check out wedding venues and things like that to act as if that man is already there, even though she had not met him. Very short time later, after she was implementing these things uh, for a little while, 
she actually met her husband uh, and he relocated. They weren't in the same state. He relocated uh, and now they are happily married with two children. So that is how you act as if you talk to him, you cook him dinner. Um, you just, you, you're just grateful that he's there. You go and find wedding dresses, try them on venues, all of that. You become a wife before you become a wife and that's it. And another thing that I want to add to this is make sure that in your single time that you are actually taking care of you getting to know you and doing the inner work that needs to be done before you actually become a wife. If you are still struggling with the fact that Jerome broke your heart, cheated on you with your best friend, you know, left you. If you are still struggling with that, you need to deal with that before Okay, before a man comes into your life, if you have self-esteem issues, trust me when I tell you this man is not going to make them better. You have to work on that first, because what's going to happen is you if you were to attract this man into your life right now, you would push him away because you are bitter and stuck in the past because of what Jerome did to you. (laughs) And you're going to be beating yourself up emotionally because your self-esteem is in the toilet. Okay. No one can ever love you beyond the point that you love yourself. Okay. I'm going to just pause right there. So if you are someone that beats yourself up and you have this really, really low self-worth and you attract this amazing man into your life, he's not going to know how to handle that. And it's not fair that you make him deal with that. So you need to work on you first. So many women get caught up in, oh, I need Mr. Right. Oh, I need, you know, my knight in shining armor and all of that. But you're not taking the time to work on you. Right. You need to be 100 percent. OK, your cup needs to run over before you attract this man into your life, because if you have issues and he have issues, then that's all you guys are going to have are issues, period. So work on you first. That is the most important thing that you can do. Raise your vibration, raise your energy levels. Right. And that's going to ensure that you attract someone into your life that is amazing, because if you're vibrating low, then all you can do is attract a man that is also vibrating really low. And that is a recipe for disaster. Trust me when I tell you. Okay. All right. So that looks like the last question. Oh, just kidding. Tips to. Get unstuck and face something that I have been avoiding. So this is kind of similar to the other question, uh, resisting. Um, How to get unstuck and face something that I have been avoiding. You get up in the morning. You put on your big girl panties and you deal with it. It's not, again, I say it's not going to go away you just have to deal with it and you're going to feel so much better right when you've dealt with it you're going to feel amazing because chances are you're making it far worse in your head than it's actually going to be how many of you know that we are really really good at making stuff up we are amazing storytellers Because we make up stories all the time in our heads, stories that turn into excuses, excuses that turn into fear, fear that turns into procrastination, right? Month after month, year after year, we're just sitting around not dealing with the things that we really need to deal with. Your life could actually, you know, explode. Your business could explode. Your self-esteem could explode. If you just deal with certain things and stop making all the doggone excuses, stop it. We are full grown, whole adult women, yet we're afraid to face things. That is so goofy to me. And I'm not judging any of you because trust me, I've done it too. 
right? So if you mean to tell me that you're, you have to face obstacle A, and if I face obstacle A, it is going to open up the floodgates to everything that I've ever desired to have and to accomplish. And you mean to tell me that you're going to stay right where you are because you're scared? Please don't let your ego get you jacked up. Because that is all that it is. Your ego, as I mentioned earlier, is there to keep you comfortable. Don't do it. I remember having a conversation with a friend of mine a couple years back. There was something that she experienced that someone else had done to her years prior to that. And I asked her a question. I said, so you need to forgive this person. It's clear, right? You're still dealing with this. You need to face this head on, forgive him so that you can move on. So what if I told you and we were in a store uh, and the store had these glass walls, right? And you could see um, standing in the store, you could see through the wall, the glass walls into the mall, right? So I said, what if I told you all of the abundance and prosperity that you could ever want, ever handle overflowing abundance and prosperity. What if I told you that all of that was right on the other side of these glass walls? We can see it, but what's keeping you from all of that is the fact that you have not forgiven this person. If you knew that, if you truly believe that, would it be easier to forgive? And she said, no. And I said, well, you want to be right where you are. Because forgiveness or unforgiveness will hold you back from so much. And if you were to accumulate some things, some of your desires, some of your aspirations, I guarantee you they will not be everlasting. You are going to lose them. Forgiveness is step number one to any process. If you are holding on to something that Joe Blow did to you years ago, trust me, Joe Blow has moved on with his life. He's not even thinking about you. So why are you still allowing this story to play out in your head? I don't understand. That blew my mind when she was like, yeah, no, she is still struggling to this day. But what if forgiving this guy going through this process And truly, truly forgiving him. What if I was right? And her life could be drastically different today, but she's still going through the same cycle of struggle. I didn't even want to get on the topic of forgiveness, but while we're on it, dang it. (laughs) If there is someone that you need to forgive in your life, you need to do it today. Get off the struggle bus. (laughs) Okay. And, and forgive whoever, whatever the situation is, because I can I, listen. Chances are that the people who hurt you in the past, which does not exist, they are not thinking about you. They're not. Listen, I'm sorry to tell you, but they're not. So I don't want to get off into a rant and I feel it coming on. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. So I hope that some of these questions were able or some of these answers resonated with you all. Um, Thank you so much for joining me for episode two of the Redesign Your Mind podcast. I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening. Happy manifesting. Namaste. All that. Make sure that you... Find me on Instagram at Mindset Makeover Mogul and follow me there. DM me your questions and or topics. Thank you so much and I'm out. Thanks again for tuning in to today's episode of Redesign Your Mind Podcast. Again, I am your host, Tidra Bagri. Make sure you connect with me over on Instagram at Mindset Makeover Mogul. Check out my website for the freebie library and all things coaching, mindset elevation, and duh, me, tjdagri.com. Lastly, make sure you head on over to amazon.com and pick up your copy of my very first book, Meditation, The Brown Girl's Guide to Meditation. And stay tuned 
because I will be releasing book two very, very, very soon. Thank you guys so much. I will talk to you in the next one.